Ohio and good morning everyone. My name is Jared Sheffer and in this video series we're going to be going over from the beginning to intermediate levels of Java programming language. In this video we're going to be going over how to set up your IDE and environment to begin programming. We're going to create our first program and begin going over data types that are available in Java. So sit back and I hope you enjoy. Okay, to get started, we're gonna first have to install our IDE, which is where we're gonna be doing all the programming. So what we're the IDE that we're gonna be using is called IntelliJ. So first we're just gonna Google IntelliJ. It's gonna be this first one here made by JetBrains. JetBrains also makes the Android IDE that is available because it's built off of IntelliJ. But we're gonna download the Community Edition because that's all we're gonna need for this. Uh, it's free to download and free to use. Now the nice thing about Java is that it should be platform agnostic, so the installation process will be different on either the platform that you use, such as Mac, Linux, or Windows, but everything else that we're going to be doing should be able to carry over regardless. With Windows here, we're going to select our installation location, we're going to set up IntelliJ uh, to use Java, as well as KT files if we want to do that later, and we're also going to add it to the bin path. This isn't strictly needed now, but in future development, you will want your Java directory to be in your path, whether you're on Windows or on Mac. Uh, we don't have to reboot for this. Uh, that's just for the path directory. We're gonna go ahead and open up IntelliJ Community Edition. If you have a previous installation, it'll ask you to import if you want here. I'm not going to import anything, so we can just start from zero. I'm going to go ahead and create a new project. Under new project, I'm going to go ahead and select the project SDK. You can download, this is basically the version of Java that we'll be using. And 1.8 is basically the last free version that Oracle released. But uh, we're going to be going with 17 for now because it's the current latest that's released. We're going to use the open source version. We're going to create a new project from template and it's going to be a command line app so we can actually see it run in a terminal. I'm going to just give this a name uh, lesson one. And this here, this base package, usually this is the domain that you're developing for. So if uh, you were developing for something like Nationwide Insurance, their website is nationwide.com, their base package name would be com.nationwide. The package shows up here at the top and we have our main class inside of our source directory inside of our dev.ohio, which is our domain directory. And this is where we're gonna be writing our code, starting with systemout.println and this will write a single line to our terminal. And we're just gonna start with a simple hello world, ended with a semicolon. And now comes our moment of truth. We're gonna go ahead and hit this triangle, which is our play button to run the program. Wait for the terminal to pop up, and here we go. We see hello world. Okay, so there's our first program. Congratulations. <laughs> Hello World is basically a staple in most programming languages to make sure you have everything configured and able to run correctly. The next thing we're going to talk about is different data types. So programming languages are built off of simple objects, kind of like Lego blocks. And you use simple objects to build more and more complex objects. The simple objects that are available in Java are called primitives and they all have very small data types relatively. These are some of the simplest data types that we have in Java and they're called primitives. So in Java we have all of these primitives that represent certain kinds of data. A byte is a zero or one representation. A short is a number not with a decimal point. An int is a, another number, same with long. Those are all numbers, but they can hold certain larger numbers. So a short can only hold a certain length of number. 
an int can hold a larger number, either positive or negative, and a long can hold an even larger number than that. And that's usually to limit how much space each one of these objects takes up in memory. A float and double both contain uh, decimal points, whereas a uh, character or a char in this represent a single letter or character on your keyboard, basically. A Unicode character is what we refer to it as. A Boolean is our basic logical structure for true or false. And a string or any other object are our larger things that are built off of these other primitives. One way to know that a object is a primitive or an object, such as a string, is primitives are always start with lowercase, whereas our objects always start with an uppercase letter. So that's why you see string here is a object because it's uppercase. And you also have these default values over on the far right hand side. We're not going to go into depth right now into these object types, but we are going to use integer a lot. We're probably going to be using some uh, decimal characters and we're going to be using string very extensively as well as creating our own objects and classes at the end of this course. And one last additional detail about string is a string is a collection of many characters, so it's basically text. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and get into actually doing some more programming with some of these data types. I'm going to first create a string, and you put the type of the object first, then the variable name, and I'm going to call this Jared, which is my name. The next thing here is I'm going to combine two strings with a plus sign. In mathematics, this would indicate like adding numbers together, but in strings, it's gonna concatenate them together so that way I get hello Jared as part of this output. Now since Java is what we refer to as a strongly typed language, we always have to tell it what type these variables are first. You don't have to give it a value initially such as this. This is when you can set a basically an empty variable and assign it later. This is what we call declaring the variable. So I'm declaring the variable greeting here and then I can take that variable greeting and set it equal to a value later on. So this is where I'm setting the greeting to good day as the string here. Also note that each one of these lines ends with a semicolon in Java that indicates where that command ends because each one of these lines will execute sequentially one after another. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and add that greeting. We're combining two variable strings now and we're gonna go ahead and run it and you'll see I get good day Jared. Now another thing you'll, that's very common with string concatenation as we call it in Java, is you usually wanna add spaces in between these variables. There's not an easy way like some other languages, you basically just have to use the plus signs to combine these strings. So we're adding that space there and combining three strings into one to print out to our console. Okay, so now I'm gonna choose another data type to use and that's gonna be an integer. I'm gonna call this variable selected number and I'm not gonna declare it yet. So I'm, I'm going to take this and I'm gonna just end it with a semicolon. And another thing to note about these variables is they use camel case, which means lower first case letter and every other word starts with an uppercase. But we're gonna go ahead and set that to three. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create another line of text that gets printed out to the console. And for that, I'm gonna go ahead and say, your, you have chosen, chosen number. And just like with our string variable, we can also add the number to this string as well because there's a string representation of these numbers. So we're gonna go ahead and run this. And we can see here, we've got two lines now. Good day, Jared, you have chosen number three. 
Now, if for example, selected number didn't have a value, I would see this red error on here saying that the variable may not have been initialized. And that's important because if you try to use a variable before it's initialized, you'll get an exception like this. Variable uh, might not have been initialized and it'll either fail to run, fail to compile, or just crash whenever you try to run the program. So you have to make sure the value or the variables have values before you try to utilize them. Moving on, I'm gonna go ahead and add another line, and now we're going to actually request input from the user. So to do this, we're gonna be using a few things. The first thing we're gonna do is actually prompt for input, and we're gonna say, please select a number. Okay, so that's our text uh, prompt for this. The other thing we're gonna need is something called a input scanner. So outside of this main method, we're gonna go ahead and create scanner, and we're gonna call this variable static input equals new scanner. And this is gonna take an argument and it's gonna be system.in for the system input. And something you'll notice here is that I do have a red error underlined here, and that's because the for or the order of this input is incorrect. So first you have to declare, uh, if you want something to be static, that goes before the type and before the variable name. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fix that. It's gonna be very similar to our main input here. So static, type, variable name. All right, so now I'm actually going to prompt the user for the input by typing in input dot next. And there's a bunch of different things that IntelliJ's IntelliSense will offer you to use, kind of like a helper. But we're just going to go ahead and go with next, which will give us the next string. If we wanted to, we could also use next int. I'll change it to that because we're going to be setting this to a specific integer. So we do selected input, it's gonna read in our next int, and then we can use it there. So this will actually print out the number that we select. You'll see here it's asking us to enter a number. We'll go ahead and enter 15, press enter, and it says I have chosen number 15. Now another thing to see here is that my number actually ended up going on the next line, if I change it to just print, then I can accept that integer on the same line as the uh, prompt. A new line character would do the same thing basically as net, uh, print line. It would add a new line at the end of it. But if we run this as just a print statement, then whenever we type in, it'll be on the same line. And we can see here it outputs my number again. Now I am trying to read in the next integer. So if I try to put something in that isn't an integer, such as the string 15, I will get a crash saying input mismatch exception. And that's because the selected number here only accepts integers. So if I try to read in the next int, but it's actually a string, I will, it will fail and it'll, I'll get an exception. So if I were to change this to like a byte, uh, it would be fine because a byte, again, like I said before, is a type of number, so it can be converted to an integer. But if I try to get something like just next string, which would be next, it will complain to me saying that the required type that it has to have is an integer, but I'm trying to provide it a string. So that's what a mismatch type exception is. I will now change this back to my next int, and that concludes this lesson. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to leave them down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video or you learned something, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you again next time.